Hello there, fellow desert and new players alike. What is going on, everybody? Hey, Russell just out here bringing you a good old tutorial on how to get Daytona USA up and running on your Model 2 emulator. It's not too terribly tricky, but I feel like we should go over it anyways, just to make sure all the bases are covered. And because I'm probably going to get some questions about this anyways on the Daytona video, so might as well get our bases covered, right? Right? Alright, let's begin. Now, you might notice uh, my voice sounds a little different on this one. I'm using a different mode on my microphone because I am a little further away from the mic than I normally am because I have this big steering wheel that I, you probably can hear in front of me. So let's get started anyways. When you first fire up the Tony USA, uh, if you've just freshly down, uh, acquired <clears throat> your ROM or your machine, you may see uh, this happens. So I was in test mode, so let's go ahead and... Uh, let that go, and this happens. Cancelled. Network board not ready. That sucks. You can't beat a key of speed if you can't get past the screen. So what's going on here? Well, notice, uh, let's, let's wind it back a little bit. Notice how it says Link ID Master, or it might say Link ID Slave instead. See, Daytona USA was able to link up with several cabinets for some awesome heads-to-heads -heads racing action. So what's going on here is it's trying to find the network board that I believe all the machines would be linked into, but it can't find it, so the game can't proceed. What do we do about this? Let's uh, go to the operator menu, which the default key for that in Model 2 would be the F2 key. Now, once you're here, what you're going to want to do is use the red and green um, buttons, as well as your sharp button, to navigate. How do you know what your red and greens are? Simple. Just go to game, configure controls, and then VR1 is going to be green, VR4 is... Oh, no, VR1 is red. Red. VR1 is red, VR4 is green. And then you also want to set your startup. Um, if you need to set your controls very simple, just got to double click this and it will ask you uh, what button or key you want to do. So just push the button or key, there you go. You also want to set your start key up. So let's go ahead and uh, if you want to just do it real quick to get past this, we, uh, just I have my settings queue as you can see there and, and once let's go ahead and navigate ourselves up here. You want to go to game system and then you're going to push, uh, you're going to push your start button. Then you want to go up to Link ID and push Start until it says Single. There's some other settings here too that you can check out as well, such as uh, your cabinet type, your card number, which is for uh, when you're doing multi-cabinet games, the uh, country the game set to, the difficulty, advertised sound, and the game mode, um, which just basically is what how many laps you, you do. You got normal, you got Grand Prix endurance, and believe me when it says endurance. So once you do that, let's go ahead and just back on out, and we're just going to go ahead and exit. And it should work now. Pretty simple, easy fix now, eh? But hey, let's go over some of the controls too, because I know some people might get a little lost with how to set the controls and what to do. So let's go ahead and whack that F2 key. Let's go back into the test mode so we can uh, not have that playing in the background uh, constantly. So now I have an Xbox 360 wireless uh, steering wheel plugged in. I have a uh, receiver for that that I've got plugged in. I know there's a bunch of different steering wheels and they all might be read differently, but I'm going to give you what works for this setup. Uh, you are going to have to know certain things too, like if your uh, wheel is X input or not. That's stuff you'll have to find out on your own, as I'm not too terribly well versed with all but the basics when it comes to plugging controls into the computer. So let's uh, let's go ahead and go over setting up the controls real quick. So the important thing, uh, since I just mentioned this, X input devices. The important thing to do is to make sure that your X input mode is on for the emulator. How do you do that? Well, within your files uh, for uh, for Model Two, there should be a file called input.exe, I believe. Not exe, uh, .ni. Uh, no, emulator. It's going to be emulator.ini. You're going to double click that, open it up. Let me get that pulled up for you here real quick. Okay, so here we are at notepad.ini. Now what you're going to want to do is, uh, and if it tells you, if Windows asks you like what you want to use to read this, go with notepad. Just tell it notepad and you'll be good to go. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to scroll down here, and you're going to want to look for X input equal. It might be default set to X input equal off when you first start, um, when you first install Model 2. So set that to equal 1, hold CTRL, push S to save the file, and go ahead and click out. That will uh, set it to where the Model 2 emulator 
will read any expert input, X input devices you have. This is incredibly important. Make sure you do this because my stupid butt didn't do this when we got a uh, we, we didn't even install Windows recently and we didn't set it up and it was, a, it was a headache. So once you have that out of the way, you're good to go with that. Now, let's go back to our game menu. So now we've got our control configuration menu pulled up here. As mentioned before, all you do is double click. Now, uh, for some reason during this uh, filming, it decided not to cooperate with me. Sometimes it wasn't pulling up the input. If that happens, I found that going here and double clicking that works. So uh, let's go ahead and get this back underway. So uh, one thing you're going to have to do too is figure out what analog your thing is being read as. I mean, there's a glowing light on here that shows that this steering wheel should be player one. But if I go in and hit up, we can see that destroy 1x. Okay, so it is reading as player 1. Good. So all you do is you just go through here and you set your controls as you want. So for steering and accelerate and brake, it's going to be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and pull that up. And so for analog device, you're going to want to set the the uh, analog device, you want to set the correct gamepad. So we're on gamepad 1 today, for whatever reason. It, 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 it ping pongs between gamepad 1 and 2 for whatever reason it is. Microsoft. So, we have to select the correct axis too, but how do we know when we have the correct axis? Well, let's just say we go down to left stick horizontal. And notice how vowel right there is changing. Oh, 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 it went up to something else for some reason. There we go. Oh, I know what it's doing. It's... There we go. And now, notice how vowel is changing there. That's how we know we got the right stick. Now, what I like to do is just hit reset, and let's calibrate a minimum and maximum. And there we go. I don't think you really need to do that, but I like to do it just to be just to be sure. Don't mess around with the invert. You don't need to do that unless, for whatever reason, your steering wheel has it backwards. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And then you just do the same thing for the accelerate and the brake. So gamepad one. And it usually uses the right trigger, so we'll just go down the right trigger. Let's keep an eye on that valve, and there we go. We've got the right trigger for uh, for the accelerator. And then let's go over the brake. Gamepad one, left trigger, and there you go. And again, you don't need to mess around with invert unless for some reason it is reading it to pushing it when you not pushing it. it weird like that. Sometimes that happens with with uh, steering wheels and because there's so many different steering wheels out of all different combinations and they're picked up by windows differently and it, it gets complex. <laughs> Video games on computers. Who knew, right? So, and then all you do is you just go ahead and you set everything else. Now, I like to use, um, I forgot what my configuration here is. I think I do left, up, and then I have two nice little paddles here. So I'll set shift three for the left paddle, shift three for the right paddle, or shift 4 for the right paddle. Uh, shift neutral you don't really need because when you shift it will keep your uh, it'll keep your stick so to speak in whatever shift you uh, use. So you don't really need to do that if you want to, you know you can. And then you got your VR buttons. So we'll do VR1, 2, VR3, VR4, start button, and your coin button. And there you go. You can also change the service uh, the, or the test menu. Uh, default if you want to. I just leave it as F2. I don't really see any need to change that. And there you go. We have mastered setting the controls. Okay, and now we are back here with the normal menu window. I had to do that full screen display weird thing because it wasn't cooperating with me. So we got this ready to go. So now that we have the controls ready to do, uh, ready to go, ready to roll, ready to spin out, we are good to go and you can become the king of speed. But well, let's make sure that we have our things set properly, okay? Let's go to input test. We're going to go ahead and push start. And you can go ahead and you can see here, it'll let you know when you've got your switch. Oh, whoops. I pushed the <laughs> there's two button. There's two switches. VR, if you push uh, red and blue at the same time, it'll, it'll knock you out of the menu. So you can go here and you can make sure that everything is set up properly. You see the shifters are working great. There's no... Now, note that there's no neutral shift button. Um, as, a, as you can see, like when I do a shift, it keeps it on. But you need to push down and it'll take the shifter off. Um, now, you may notice with the handle acceleration brake, it does this really weird thing. That's just letting you know that it's reading it. But if the, it looks like it's going in time with what you're uh, pushing, you should be good to go. You don't really need to know how to read that because, again, the min max. 
uh, the valuation things that we did when we set the wheels, got it all set up. It's kind of a, it's kind of a weird, weird thing too. It is trying to tell you like what, where your wheel is, and there, there and if you dig up an owner's manual, it will actually tell you like how to tell how this works. Like if it's under two dh, then your wheel is all the way over to the left. But as you can see, it's a little, a little tricky to read. So let's go ahead and mash the red and blue buttons and get out of here. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, uh, you also have, well, you also have the um, other menu items too. You might want to check out to see what's up with. As mentioned before, you got a game system that lets you uh, set different things for your game: link ID, card number, cabinet, country, difficulty, advertised sound, game mode, and rival arrow. Bookkeeping is if you really, really, really want to know how your virtual system is doing. You can see how many times you've put a shoot in, what coin slot, how many times you've played a game the total time the game has been played, and other cool things like that. Point assessment will let you decide how many coins you need to play the game at. I'm trying to find out how to do free play on this. I could have swore there's a way of doing that. Watch, it's going to be at the end here somewhere. You can see there's... Oh wait, no, there, there it was. I'm trying to figure out how to do free play, he says, as he just figures out how to do... <laughs> Looks like you're not the only one that's learning with- oh, shoot, I'm trying to figure out how to get this going here. There we go. Oh, no, 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 no. I should have mapped all these buttons to the, be the same one as the, uh... Alright, and then you have, uh, let's see what else we have here. We went through coin assessment. We also have output tests, it's your usual just output tests to see, like to make sure your display is working properly. Your virtual display. The drive BD test lets you make adjustments that, if I remember correctly, are related to force feedback. But I don't really mess around with those too often, that kind of gets more into advanced stuff. I'm trying to keep it a little bit basic, as basic as you can get with emulators. And then you have your sound test, which lets you, uh, you can do an automatic sound test. And then you can also go in and like... There you go. So if you're looking for a way to capture that arcade, uh, that arcade soundtrack, there you go. Just just load this up and, and you're good to go. <laughs> and you can also do voices too. They're, they're, and I, they're underway. It's kind of cool because there's like so many That's like... Recovery. I didn't realize how many different sound effects and things are in here. Careful, he's gonna slingshot past you. And you got T uh, TGP tests and memory tests are just related to uh, the board. Like if this was an actual arcade machine, that would be ways of testing things in board. Backup RAM clear if you want to nuke everything back to default settings. And I believe uh, I can fly. No, I believe that's about it. Uh, that'll get you started with doing Daytona USA. Are they setting up the controls where you can play? Now again, there's so many different wheel peripherals and models who might read them in different ways, but I might not be able to easily assist you guys with like I try to do with other issues uh, that I see in the comments. I would still say comment anyways. Uh, I might be able to figure out something for you or someone else who plays a model to an emulator, they might have a fix that they can help you out with. Um, I, I don't want to sound mean, but Googling things, it, when it comes to emulation, knowing how to Google stuff is just extremely useful. Uh, it's so good to be able to know how to Google for things like that. Um, you can do additional tinkering as well in the emulator.ini file and the drive BD test menus. And again, that's more advanced stuff. We are trying to keep it, the, uh, not decent, but we are trying to keep it basic. So that's about it. And remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell if you want to become a little ringling dazzler so you get updates on anything new that we hit the channel. And of course, we also read our comments, so if you've got any input or requests or questions, feel free to fire away. And if you want to help financially support the channel, we got paypal.me for a one-time donation. Our still kind of their Patreon page, and we've got a super cool affiliate with TubeBuddy. Uh, TubeBuddy is a super cool kit that you can use if you're a fellow YouTube creator like us. I've got all kinds of neat tools like the useful Keyword Explorer, the ability to quickly make basic thumbnails, and other really cool neat features. 
Also, if you pay annually and you're under 1k subs, you can save up to 50% off on a subscription! There's also a free version you can try out too, that I believe gives you a one month free of the Pro License. That is an affiliate link, so any downloads or install help us here at Anthro Arcade with no additional cost to you. Thank you so much for watching, Dazzlers, and I'll see you all out there on the racetrack. Good luck becoming the king of speed.